I'm Akiko Fujita here in Las Vegas at CES 2024, where I'm inside the John Deere booth, joined by Josh Jepson. He is the CFO of the company. We're talking about automated tractors. Not the first thing you think about with John Deere, but certainly this is a company that's undergone incredible transition, especially with your tech investments. Yeah, it's a significant opportunity for, for us to help our farmers do more with less and make their lives easier. You know, there's there's this, a lot of challenges around having the access to skilled labor and also just being able to execute jobs when they need to get them done. So in this example, an autonomous tractor doing tillage work does just that. Okay, so let's set things up here because we've got an iPhone here, right? We're gonna try to operate a tractor that is out in Austin, Texas. Yep, We're right. looking up here because the monitors are there. Yep. How do we get started? This is an app, by the way, that every farmer uses, correct? Yeah, so this is the John Deere Operations Center. Okay. It's, it's really the digital platform for all of their ag information as it relates to machine health, agronomy and the like, but you can control our autonomous tractor here. So we can see it where it's running, you can see stats about it, but if you just push pause, it's running right now. Okay, can and, I go ahead and do that? Yeah. And we watch here, so we see it stopped. Okay. Came to a halt here, and then yep. we press and resume. And then when you press resume, yeah, go ahead. Okay. It'll run through safety checks just to make sure there's nothing around it, and then we'll see the, the tractor take off and start going again. So again, this is about getting jobs done when they need to be done, mm -hmm. job quality, and really hard to quantify, but we'll, we'll, from our farmers that have been using this, it's a huge quality of life advantage. They can be two places at once, mm -hmm. so they can be with their family, they can be at sporting events they would have historically missed, or just having dinner with the family or doing other work around the farm that they wouldn't have had access to before. Talk to me a bit about the demand that's out there, because especially in farming, as we were talking off camera, you've got a lot of people that are aging, you've got a lot, not a lot of people that are getting in, right? I mean, there's going to be an increasing shortage in this space. The robotics, increasingly important. Yeah, that, that's right. I mean, you think about the, the work that our farmers do, and it's really critical. We're talking about food and fiber, which is really, really important. Um, there aren't more people necessarily moving into agriculture, which means our machines are gonna have to do more. And the ability to automate and, and, and move to autonomous is a huge unlock for our customers. And we feel like we're really well positioned to do that given how we do all the jobs that our customers do on the farm and our ability to manage all that in a digital platform that makes this all very seamless. So, so far we've we've pressed pause, we've resumed it again, but really, you know, we, we talk so much about autonomous driving on regular roads. You're trying to accomplish a whole nother thing here yep. because farming is not that easy. What other functions can you do remotely? Yeah, certainly, so there's opportunities we, we can, um, adjust settings, like you, we could adjust speed, uh, for example, on this right now. In other machines, like on a combine in the harvesting time of the year, you can actually adjust the key settings to drive better uh, yield through that process. And, and those are all the things we need to do to help our farmers be in more places at, at once and be able to adjust and make changes to ultimately deliver the best outcomes that they can have. Okay, so let's try, can, can we try to adjust the, the speed here? Yeah, so right there, infield speed, you can go up or down. Okay, we're at 5.1 miles an hour. Let's try to increase it a little. Can we go up to like six? Yeah, probably there's, yeah. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So it pauses once. And now we're going, yep. Okay. Is five miles kind of where you would usually yeah. want to keep it? Yeah, in that range, really depending on soil conditions, how wet or dry is it. Um, and you can see down on the display um, that we're seeing here, we're, we're looking at the remote display, but you can see it's going you know, 5.8, 5.9 miles per hour like you, like you adjusted it. Okay, now I'm watching the screen here. It looks like the tractor is going out of the, the square essentially. But, but you have created the, the parameters, right? That's right. So what you see, the, the purple or, or excuse me, the red or pink line is, is the, the field is geofenced. So it, it will not go outside of those boundaries. Okay. And what you can see, like the white line um, is actually the path. So it's going to enter a turn um, and, then we'll, and then we'll carry on. What is, um, okay, so let's bring it back down to where it was. Was that like 5.1 5 miles an yeah, hour? Yeah, I think so, yep. And what about some of the other functions that we can use? 
times. The turn speed. Yeah, so this is preset turn speed, so it'll always slow down okay. when it's going to do turns. Um, like I said, if we were in a combine, if we were out harvesting right now, and you know, you you were the farm manager and I was an operator, and you wanted to check to see how was I doing from a grain quality perspective, you could actually adjust key settings on the combine as well. So what we're seeing is the 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 the, the operations center is becoming really the the central platform to manage the operations not just looking backwards at results but also in the in the in the moment what adjustments do we want to be making in field what can be done remotely right now and what's the next step yeah I, I think you know so a lot of adjustments on machines today um, we all can also can do remote diagnostics so when we think about how does how do we provide better and better support to the machines we're monitoring these machines our dealer network has access if you so choose so we can actually identify problems before they create a failure. So doing predictive, proactive maintenance ahead of time to say, hey, here's an issue, we're seeing a code, we think in the next three hours we may have an issue, we're gonna send someone out and take care of that today. So uptime is really important, so meaning the machine's up and running when you want it to be running, is we spend a lot of effort making sure customers are running when they need to be, because in agriculture, windows to execute jobs are really, really tight. You've got weather, you've got a lot of other things that are in, in play. And, and I'm no expert in farming, but obviously this is just one step, correct? I mean, what is the thinking in terms of how John Deere wants to expand capability yeah. given the multiple steps that are required to harvest, harvest crops? Certainly. So our, we have a goal by 2030 to have, for corn and soybeans, a fully autonomous production system. So that means tillage, like you see here, like you've been controlling, but also moving to planting, to spraying when we protect the crop, and then to harvest. So our intent is we would be fully autonomous for corn and soybeans um, across every job. So that means you're going to need to be able to manage each job and all of those settings across all of those uh, things you're doing. And, and while we're talking about this specifically, being able to operate the tractor remotely. I mean, you're digitizing across the entire stack, correct? Correct. Yeah, so the, the operations center, the John Deere Operations Center is really the a digitized farm. Um, you've, you've taken that so you can monitor, you can look at historical yields, you can look real time how you're executing the field. As we go through, we are actually, if we were planting, you could see that we're geospatially tagging each seed so we know where every seed is. Um, we've got technology over here that is furrow vision. It's actually putting a camera where a farmer's never been able to see before, to see in the furrow when, as you're planting, to understand, you know, are you getting the right seed depth, the right spacing between seeds. Um, so it's really about how are we making these jobs easier for our farmers to execute on and improved outcomes. And we think through uh, the technology that we're delivering and the, the digital aspects, we can deliver better financial outcomes, and better sustainable or environmental outcomes for our farmers. And finally, you know, we were just talking that John Deere is not a name that used to be at CES, right? I mean, now you've become a regular here. The company's talked about being seen now as, as one of the largest robotics companies, equipment uh, manufacturers too. How much of that goal that you've talked about will involve uh, being more acquisitory, given all the technology you need to bring in house. Yeah, certainly. So, so we've historically been pretty vertically integrated, um, and and we've augmented over the last five or six years in the technology side via acquisition. So we've made uh, a number of acquisitions in in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley, bringing both technology but also capabilities. And and I think the 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 magic for us has been bringing those capabilities and and integrating that with our experts in our machine forms and with agronomy, uh, which has really been helpful. So I think we'll continue to look to add to our portfolio organically, but also inorganically, where we can see set function changes uh, in, in our ability to deliver solutions. Josh, thank you yeah. so much for talking to us. Yeah, thank you.